This is KTVO's Good Morning Heartland. And welcome back. Do you know what osteopathic manipulative medicine is or how it works? Try saying that five times really fast. Right. You may have heard of it, but like for many, including myself, you may not know what it all entails. This morning we have Dr. Jay Danto to break it down for us. How are you doing? Hi, I'm very good. Thank you very much. Thanks for coming on. So first of all, explain what OMM is. Osteopathic manipulative medicine is a type of uh, approach to treating people uh, with multiple different types of ailments, including musculoskeletal, um, things going on with their viscera, their uh, lungs, their heart, you know, heart disease, the common cold. There's an osteopathic manipulative medicine approach to helping people heal from those ailments. It's been around for over 100 years, and it originated right here in Kirksville, Missouri, mm -hmm. with Andrew Taylor still being the founder of the osteopathic profession and the founder of our Kirksville College of Osteopathic Medicine, A.T. Still University School. There you go. And so we have Scott here that you're actually going to um, perform OMM, correct? So cool. what, what, what can somebody expect if they come and get this done? Well, with any osteopathic treatment, the first thing we want to do is we want to look and uh, we, we talk to a person, we get a history, just like mm -hmm. any other doctor visit. And then we look at uh, the musculoskeletal system. And the best finding for our perspective is um, to see something that matches up with the patient's complaints. Okay. If we can find something, if somebody was complaining of, um, you know, a coughing a lot, and we found something in the ribs or in the thoracic area, okay. that would be something we could treat and potentially help go away through a manipulative intervention. The next thing we do is we palpate their body, and, and well, that's part of the palpation. And if they have a musculoskeletal complaint, uh, Scott was telling me earlier that uh, his first. Uh, experience with osteopathic medicine was when you had a problem putting your chin to your chest uh -huh. and it turned out to be his tailbone was misbehaving. So it's, his problem was all the way down here and it was affecting up here. Okay. We, we see that quite common. Uh, there's a story about A.T. Still going into a, into a classroom and, and with a cat and he yanked on the cat ta cat's <laughs> tail. The cat, you know, screeched and, and, uh -huh. uh, and everyone looked up and said, what, what's going on? And he says, well, where's the problem? Mm -hmm. and it wasn't at the mouth end, right. it was at the other end. So, so we look at people and we, we look at what's going on with their body and then uh -huh. we go ahead and we, do, we choose an intervention. And I kind of look at people and look at them in a layered approach. Uh -huh. So I'm looking at them, um, you know, me mechanically, we mm -hmm. look at them from muscles and fascia, which is the connective tissue that connects all the muscles, bones and joints. And then we look at them at the joint level, uh -huh. and so so, and then also the neurologic level. So when I treat somebody, I treat somebody on all those different levels, and I often start out at least invasive, and that's to so people get to know um, and be comfortable with my touch. Right. Okay. And, and so in in Scott's case, I find something right here that's misbehaving. Is it is it a little tender, Scott? Mm -hmm. Yeah. So um, and I can go ahead and I see how it responds to mm -hmm. extension, flexion, it gets tighter with flexion, it gets better with extension, side bending, gets better with side bending this way. So, I, and, and what we can do is, and we can see rotation, it likes to rotate the same way. So it's, it's, it's pretty, if I position it in all those different positions and then look at things like translation and uh -huh. anterior and posterior, I can put in that position, I can say, take a deep breath in, and exhale, take a deep breath in and hold it in. And I could put it in a position in which it likes to be. Okay. And what that does is it allows the muscles, the fascia, the nerves all to reset. And uh, why that's going on, I can tell my patients a story, but you know, they, <laughs> right. you know so you, you let all those things reset and you're holding, as, you're doing a good job for holding your breath. Were you, were you a swimmer or something? <laughs> no? All right. So you, you have people uh, um, hold, hold their breath and you, you position them and Everything resets, and then when you take it, when they're ready and they mm -hmm. exhale, and you can exhale, um, <laughs> they, they, you can reassess and see if that, what kind of change that made. And right. if it made a great change, awesome. And, you know, that affects people mechanically. It affects them at the muscles, the fascia, right. at the joint level, okay? And then you can sit there and maybe go into something a little bit more um, deeper. And right. everyone who leaves my office, I, I try to have them leave. Perfect. Okay. And perfect means there's no restriction right. at all. So we look at them and and their joints should be free moving. Mm -hmm. So there's a little bit of something still right. here. So I would say go so ahead and, and lay on your back, for instance. 
And so speaking of treatment, now can this be done on anybody, or is there like you know, it does it you know, is there a certain age that you start you know doing this, or like if something wrong with kids, can they come in, or is it for people my age, older people? What's what's the requirement when it comes to that? Well, when we first started treating people, um, I mean, it can be done on anybody to answer your question, and because we can do so many different types of treatment, uh, there's a, a lot of things we can do uh, that are specific for the patient. Like in Scott's case, we started off with something that looked at things from an indirect mm -hmm. treatment, uh, uh, not um, invasive at all. And now I'm looking at something that's going to work more on the thrusting, like uh, you know, the snap crackle pop right. that a lot of people receive at doctor's offices. And in this type of approach, um, we want to make sure that we, uh, uh, you know, age appropriate. Mm -hmm. I wouldn't really want to do some of this on somebody who has right. osteoporosis, where I could possibly fracture a bone, exactly. or in somebody that was very, very young, um, you know, like a baby. Mm -hmm. But there's other treatments that we do on babies all the time that works tremendously well and helps them out. So another question I have mm -hmm. before we <laughs> have to wrap it up is, um, how long can somebody expect this session to last when they come see you or another doctor that performs this? It depends. It depends. <laughs> it depends on yes. what they're getting done. And and it um, if. If it's something, and, and everyone has their different specialties. That's one of the nice things about the Houston Clinic where I work, and that already released. I didn't even have to barely do anything because of the, what <laughs> I, I did before. I heard that. <laughs> it so, literally just went. Brrr. Yeah, so it's you. You, um, you know, so so with some patients to come in and they're an easy fix. I have 90 year olds who have never had a day of pain in their life who come in and suddenly they have a, a problem. Right. And you can treat them, and in. 10 minutes, you're, they're all better. I have people who are in their 20s and they come in and I have to spend a half an hour working to try and get the, the musculoskeletal system to work correctly. At our clinic, the Gunston Clinic, um, we see a lot of specialty level cases where you know patients have had problems for a while, they haven't been able to get better with other doctors and we're able to work on them and get them better, but unfortunately it takes a little bit more time, right. you know, the treatments are a little bit longer. Uh, but it is just uh, uh, a great resource to have in the area. And Kirksville, you know, sometimes we, we hear from people in Kirksville that you know, they feel so fortunate to have the, exactly. the founding school here and mm -hmm. have all the sister here. But at the school, we know it's the other way around. We feel so fortunate to be here in northeast Missouri and know that we're able to perform a service and we have great patients. So. All right. Well, thank you so much for your time. Thanks. And what we'll do is we'll post all of this on our website at heartlandconnection.com as well as Dr. Danto's information. And we'll be right back.